Okay. I'm just gonna grab some tools over here. Right, that looks like that size handle is gonna be perfect for <coughs> where you're putting it. But if you're making this from a mold, then all your handles are the same size. Some are making pictures and teapots and mugs. Well, my mold, hand, my mold handles are the just for the mugs. Yeah. Nice. Okay. If I need a handle for something else, I just make it. Gotcha. Yeah, I can't. And the reason I cast solid, like the reason that this works for me is because I cast them solid. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm not yeah, yeah. into, not that I don't, like I think it's a great, way to make things, but I'm not a caster. I don't like weight working with yeah. mm -hmm. making forms out of liquid clay, which is not for me. I have a lot of slip cast work that I love. Like, so when I make statements about things, I just mean like it doesn't work for me as, yeah, a, yeah, as yeah. a maker, not mm -hmm. as a collector. So do you still um, missing doing your painting? No. <laughs> Yeah, I feel okay. like, yeah, like, and, and now with this, ra with the ram press that I have, it's not, the ram press works, it's up and running, but it takes a lot of money to get it going, so I'm kind of like in a, in a, in a, in a lull right now, um, but that, I'm going to get into making tile with that, which is going to get me into thinking. Architecturally, potentially domestic, but also like like paintings, mm -hmm. like thinking about paintings mm -hmm. again, um, but paintings. clay paintings. Have you seen Philip Reed's work? No. Oh, <laughs> oh, is it? Well, is he a painter? painter? He's a painter. Yeah. But then he paint in tiles and mm -hmm. trick a big piece of tile as a canvas. Yeah. yeah. And how does he fire those? Um, China. Oh. <laughs> yes. No, we, he did something in here too. Yeah. But because we recently we set up a studio in China, yeah. So we mine just make, make work there. Yeah. You, have you seen Wayne Higby's installation? Yeah. 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 It's pretty impressive stuff. So I'm, I'm going to slip and score this one and this one now. It's a lot of surface to attach something to. And you can trap air in it. And if you fire them too fast in the bisque, they can pop off. If you do trap air, the clay is very thick. And here I let this stuff dry for a while. And I make sure everything's pretty dry before it goes in the bisque. Yeah, the, the contact surface are so big. Yeah. After I attach this handle, I'm going to trim. I'm going to trim something. Teapot, I think. Whatever I got. I brought way too much stuff to do, you guys. <laughs> I always do that. I, th I don't even know how I thought like I could do any of it. You're doing my whole semester work in one afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> That. And so from the middle, right, I'm working out. Okay. You know, and it wants to pop off because this handle is a little stiff. So when it's stiff, do you put in the water and reconstitute and make it softer before you put Sometimes, it Sometimes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the nice thing about porcelain, too, is it softens up pretty quick. Mm. Did you ever work in stonework? Yeah. Like when I was wood firing, like oh, yeah. like when I was at New Paltz, all I did was work in stoneware and wood fire. And, uh -huh. and up until the time I got to Penn State, I was working in stoneware and wood firing and then finally got seduced by porcelain because of glaze. Oh, yeah. yeah, if some student uh, thinking about graduate school, Penn State is a very good school. 
for a ceramic master program and they have uh, great teachers there. And when I was the student, I was also considered going to Penn State. <laughs> but uh, Louisiana State accepted me. And, um, LSU. LSU. Mm -hmm. Who was your teachers? Well, actually, Bobby Silverman there was oh, my yeah. teacher. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and then Kate Blacklock. Oh. Yeah. Mm. But now it's all different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Andy Shaw and, and uh, Andy Shaw is also Mikey a great Walsh. doctor, too. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Michelle, Micheline Walsh. Yep, Mikey, Mikey Walsh, yeah. And Penn State is not far away. You still work close to your family <laughs> from here. And it's a really cool town, like uh, State College, Pennsylvania. Yeah. It's a lot going on. Really cool village. I n actually never went to a football game, mm -hmm. which I bummed I, now, looking back. At the time, I was just like, why would I do that? I'm here for clay. <laughs> but like, it's quite a, quite an experience. Yeah. I, I was just always, it was an inconvenience to me then, mm -hmm. because literally 250,000 people would camp out around the stadium for three days, mm, like before and after the game. Yeah, oh yeah. And so this, the, the campus would be like closed down. We'd have to mm -hmm. only be able to bike in on those days. And mm -hmm. So when you're in Penn State, it's uh, Roberto Lago. It's, it's the same year as you or before or after? Who? Robert, Roberto. Oh, Roberto? Roberto, Roberto Lugo? Yeah. No, I was, um, I think, three years ahead of him. Okay. I think he graduated a few years ago. I got I got I got out in uh, 2010. I graduated. Mm -hmm. I think he maybe was 2014. Oh, okay. Because mm -hmm. Roberto Roberto yeah. Lago, Lugo, yeah. Lugo, then he's work a more kind of social commentary, and but also um, like a, a pop form, a, a vessel form, um, little job, but it's moves off. A storytelling mostly, yeah, about his experience and how he related to society, right? Can you say that? Yeah, that sounds pretty accurate. <coughs> <coughs> So a lot of great, lot of great makers came out of Penn State in the past yeah. year. So, so that's I say that if student wanted to be a good, great maker and and conceptually also. And then Penn State is a good school. Is that a miracle sponge? No, it's just carpet foam. <laughs> cut up into little squares. <laughs> I imagine makeup sponges. That's what people say. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, the, the casting handles just require a lot of cleanup. And those of you who cast know that. <laughs> you know, like, it's funny, like, people are always like, oh, you cast them now, they must be so much quicker, and I'm like, oh. a little bit. <laughs> I, I mean... You don't smooth them over, you like having sort of like the contrast between that texture and the smoothness of the... Wait, say that again, I'm sorry. The, um, like, you don't smooth them down, like, on the top part. Like, you like having this sort this? of... This? No, this, when it, where it connects. Oh. Oh, no, I, yeah, I'm going to leave that little bit of connection there where you see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm going to leave that there. It's part of the aesthetic choice, right? Yeah, I think so. Just like a little bit of the history there or the connection of how it was made. I mean, I'm going to go in there with a sponge and kind of smooth it, but um, and glaze will kind of cover that a little bit. Mm -hmm. So Sarah, you did some yeah, casting too. Yeah, right? I casted a... a uh, cup and handle separately, and boy, let me tell you, that was that was challenging. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, um, my the guy I was working with, Matt Greco, my mentor, was like, "Oh, we have to ca cast the handle and the cup separately. It has to it has to be done that way." Um, and it turns out, like, he didn't know any better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. He was just like, "I think that's how it needs to be done." Um, so I, after sweating for months of casting handles and cups separately and then having to apply them in porcelain when it's slip-casted and soft, tends to lose its shape very, very
very easily. Slumps. It, yeah, it slumps, and you, sometimes you don't find out until you take it out of the kiln, and it's... That's right. You know. So finally, uh, he had casted someone else's mug with the handle on it, so 3D printed and casted it as, as one piece. And uh, he said, ah, oh, gee, Sarah sure is going to be pissed off when she finds out about that. And I marched back into his, his office, and I said, we're going to do this in one piece, aren't we? <laughs> I said, all right, I'm, I'm printing it up now. And so I made a second mold of that cup and handle together in one piece. And uh, that had its own challenges also because the, uh, the actual cup would have a less of a setting time than the handle. You have to yeah. pass the handle thing. And the, so, you see the indentation of the handle on the inside. So there was a lot of fiddling around with that too. And yeah. I'm still working that out. Yeah. No, even this, like right now, all I'm working on is removing the seam. Yeah, right. It's the simplest part. That and that's because that seam is going to want to show itself. Yeah. And it might even be showing itself on some of those hand on that handle on that mug over there. You might be able to if you look at it real close see the seam on that. Yeah, that one there. Do you see a seam on that handle? Barely. Barely. Yeah. Barely. But I think we just see this part of the aesthetic choice. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Part of the hand of the baker. All right. I'm going to stop fussing. That's nice, yeah. Right? And then the last thing I would do is I would just take my little stamp. Did you? Is that like plastic? No, I made it. It's just yeah. clay. Clay, yeah. You can Bisqued it, yeah. clay. I've been trying to make one because it's so... Wow. A friend of mine carved hers out of an eraser. Oh, 